Hi everyone, it's Freya, and I'm going live kind of early in the day. This is an unusual time, but I just actually posted something on Facebook that I wanted to expand on a little bit. I know that all of you want to become better and you use YouTube videos and tutorials and maybe online courses and a lot of resources online that maybe you may find through Google or someone you know in order to find better exercises and to address areas in your voice that you want to improve on. So um, that is all great. And I think it really speaks for you that even if you're here live now and if you're watching this, you know, it speaks for you that you are interested in bettering yourself, in learning, in improving, and in actually taking action. Because, of course, you can't just sit there and wish something. It's not going to happen unless you take action. And in singing, it is so crucial to not just take any action, but just to do the right thing. Because I have seen it to where if you just do something that is actually not what you need to do, it can be counterproductive and it can actually make it worse. You may have experienced this yourself, that you may do an exercise if you do not execute correctly, it could actually reverse, have the reverse effect and make your voice worse and make your technique worse because you don't have anyone to guide you to actually give you feedback on your execution and if you're doing everything correctly and what to improve on. The first thing is, of course, you can't see yourself from the outside and you can't hear yourself from the outside. You could record yourself, which is very valuable. But the other thing is you may not exactly have the ear for that or no, because you want to, of course, learn from someone who is already much better than you are, who is an expert in what you want to become an expert in, who is great at what you want to become great at. So in order to do that, it is good to watch videos of... I mean, like I have a channel and there's lots of really great videos out there of, you know, that vocal coaches put out there who have a lot of experience, who are performers, who have tons of experience even teaching. And so that is a great thing. However, you still don't get any personal feedback. And I've just seen it many times that I give an exercise and then I see how someone does it and it's done totally wrong. And it is so important that you get feedback even if you don't have time to maybe give feedback get feedback every single time you practice or every week for a lesson it is important that you actually check up on your technique and on the way you execute things in order to actually move forward and that's what i mean by taking the right action it's not enough just to practice the same thing day in, day out, and just keep repeating and repeating and repeating the same things. It's really about being more intentional. For example, if you want to expand your range and you want to sing higher, it's not enough just to sing the same pitch every single day and just to hammer away on it. You want to be more intentional. You want to incorporate the basics and ask yourself, in singing that high pitch that I'm trying to achieve in increasing my range on the top, do I have a breathy tone? Could it be, oops, I'm sorry, whoopsie, <laughs> sorry. Do I have a breathy tone? Is that due to a lack of overall tension, due to a lack of support, due to a lack of vocal cord closure? Is there something I can do first to address that issue to where I do not become so breathy to where then I can sustain a higher tone more easily without hurting myself and without getting tired? Um, am I even, do I have good posture so I can even take a nice and deep breath? Am I even giving myself time to breathe? And when I execute the high pitch, do I attack it to, is it a glottal attack that is harsh and maybe that is causing the onset to just result in a flip right away when I try the high pitch? Or is it maybe that I'm pressing against the vocal cords too much that I'm there's different placements, of course. Am I lifting my soft palate? Am I narrow? So there's so many problems that could cause just your strain in the voice. And that is, it, that's 
probably where that's where it's important to take the right kind of action. It's not enough just to go ahead and sing that pitch. You have to do it the right way. Now, before I get go on, I want to remind you that my master class is open for registration. It's a four month program, so you can just go to masteryourvoice.tv. It doesn't open up again until later this summer. So if you've, been, if you've been, if you have been waiting for it to open back up, to have me as a personal coach, as a personal mentor for four months every day, check it out, masteryourvoice.tv. Okay, let's go on. Oh, and by the way, you can get $100 discount on the course fee if you register by January 15th. Now, you just use the coupon code MASTER100. Uh, capital letters master and then the number 100 um, and then you can get $100 off I'll tell you how much it is it's 1200 US dollars for the whole four months if you pay in one payment and it is 350 US dollars if you pay in four installments so 350 per month four times okay let's continue and let me scroll actually over here so I can see your comments but I wanted just to expand a little bit more so doing the right exercise at the right time, executed the right way. And actually I think singing the right kind of repertoire in the right key. So that's what I mean by taking the right kind of action, the right action. It doesn't really help only to just continue, continue to do the same, the same, the same, the same, and just sing the song again and again and again. It's going to help you to get better, but it's not really going to move the needle fast enough. And if you want to go faster, you just need someone to check up on you and to have some personal feedback. That's just my opinion. I've just seen it way too many times to where someone actually made it worse instead of better because they didn't have any clear instruction and they don't have, didn't have any feedback on if they're executing correctly. And also, you may not know where your voice needs to go. You may not have that overall picture, that vision or that knowledge of, okay, this is the path. This is kind of the longer term path that needs to happen in order for you to become stronger and expand your range and just have a lot more versatility and agility in your voice. You may not know that because you don't have that experience. Like I have experience of, many years of teaching and I've seen so many students so I have a lot of experience of where, like I've seen all scenarios happening and I know what it can lead to and I know how to get to a certain result um, because of course I always experiment a lot I just love experimenting with my voice um, my book is coming out soon in the next two weeks I'm still working on the audiobook version I want them to I want them all to come out at the same time but I'm writing a lot in my book about my story and about my experience and how I always loved to experiment with the sounds I could make with my voice, even as a kid. I, I'm just like a voice nerd. And I want you to become a voice nerd, to really experiment and just to try out everything you can do in your voice. But I said, without any feedback and instruction, it can be dangerous. Um, I don't know. It's almost like personal training if you wanted to lift weights and do bodybuilding if you've never done it and you know nothing about it you have to be careful because if you do it wrong you could actually injure yourself and then it's like a negative effect right you don't want that to happen so um and also meeting the right people i think being around people who motivate you um, if you are in a group or something of singers, I don't know if you're in a choir, that is great. Or even a Facebook group. I have a Facebook group, Master Your Voice. Um, being in a group to surround yourself with the right people who help you to stay motivated, who help you to stay inspired, who help you to just have a reality check every once in a while and to also see others and just to kind of, so you can compare yourself and see where you're at. Um, you don't want to compare yourself in a sense to like, oh, I want to be like that person. But it gives you a better sense of where you're at and if you're making any progress if you surround yourself with the right people. 
And then, of course, building the right connections. I mean, if you want to be successful in singing, it's always good to know someone and that someone knows someone else. It's like having a network and then building the network is so important. I mean, if you want to ever have gigs or something, it can't be done without knowing someone. You have to know someone. You have to, someone has to know about you and has to know something about you to know what it is that you stand for and what kind of things you can do with your voice and you know, what kind of artist you are, what kind of performer you are, and then they can hire you and you can actually make money with it. I have a, I have a course. Um, it's closed right now, but it's success boot camp for singers. And that's what we talk about really about how you make more money with your singing. How do you, how do you actually be successful with what you do? Because there's a whole, like the business side of singing, this is a whole other thing. You know, once you've mastered your voice, you want to do something with it. You want to connect with the right people and do the right things in order to be successful, to do something with it. So let me go ahead and answer some of your questions. Um, let's see how long has it been because I, I got a lot of work to do today. Um, but again, if you want to check out my masterclass, masteryourvoice.tv, it's open now. And if you register before January 15th, it's January, got to remember that, 2019 now. Um, you can get $100 off by entering the coupon code MASTER100. So um, let me see your questions here a little bit. Hello, are you going to scroll for me now? There we go. Okay, okay, okay. Um, 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 um. Indira asks... Help me, please. I feel tension every time I sing, even if it's on my in my comfortable zone. Tension in my throat. Hmm. See again, this is really hard. It's like a doctor when you ask, like, oh, something hurts. It's really hard to know where it could come from, what the cause is. But I'm you're you must be doing something wrong in the vocalization process in and of itself. I don't know if you have a breathy tone that could cause strain or you're pushing too much. Maybe you don't have enough compression and vocal cord closure. Something is causing strain and you're pushing something too much. Something is not working efficiently. And so the way the the voice works is really the air is the first component. Am I getting the right amount of air? Am I getting a steady stream of air? Am I getting enough compressed air? Like not loose, but there's got to be some compression going on. That's the first element. And then the next element is the air does pass through the vocal folds. And so how are the vocal folds? Are they, what position are they in? There are several muscles that control the position of the larynx and the vocal folds. And the question now is, are you in an ideal state there are you is the are the vocal folds closed are you in chest voice head voice or are you in a mix or are you in a very breathy kind of hole where you're not defined and so it does strain one group of muscles or you are even pushing your larynx down or pulling it up constantly which also does cause strain and then the next element of course is resonance by opening up a lot of space, like your mouth, your throat, so that the sound waves can move into your head and all those little crevices and nooks and just ampl be amplified, you have to open up. And sometimes we compensate because resonance is bad and it sounds just very, it's closed up. We push more, um, pushing more air through the vocal folds because we want a bigger sound and so you compensate. So I could probably, like talk about this for a long time, but those are the elements and you got to look at some of those where, what level is, you know, is that, is the problem starting? Where is it starting? Okay. Um, um, um. Vicky da says, hi, Fred, I love your video. Thank you. I am a little bit, a little bit confused that in which voice color should I sing the song in? Well, it really does depend on the song. I think, first of all, of course, you want to find a natural voice. Like right now, I'm talking in my natural voice. Right now, I'm not talking in my natural voice. I'm altering the placement, and it sounds a little bit strange. And it's also going to cause strain if I do this for a long time. Now I'm back in my normal voice. This is my natural placed voice. And if I talk like this the whole time and I was a little bit narrow, I'm actually pulling up my larynx also, and this would cause a lot of strain. 
See, this can be in talking and in singing, but basically you want to start at this neutral place when you're singing at. Um, you want to start in a very neutral place, and it depends on the song. If you're singing a very soft and tender song, you want to have a little bit of breathiness, because, of course, not when you're singing very high, but it's like, I am singing so tenderly, and I am not having tight vocal cord closure, but I'm still going for a nice open resonant tone. On the other hand, if I wanted to sing something very intense and like, I don't know, you hurt me so and now I hate you. You hurt me so and now I hate you. Different voice color. Probably it's cutting me out now. You know, when I get too loud, it cuts out. It turns down the volume automatically. It's the live stream that does that. It's not my computer. Um, so it really does depend on the song, what voice color. But you always want to start in a natural place. You got to find that. Okay, uh, Lukman Cezat, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Hi, Freya, I'm a 16-year-old male, and I love to sing. How can I improve my singing for the future? Question mark. I can belt well, but I want to make it even better. It really helps me when you put, like, question marks or periods when, when I read something. Um, so... I have tons of videos about belting. I really suggest you search Freya Casey belting. And I have four videos that are really long. But if you really want to dive, dive a lot deeper into belting, I have four videos on YouTube. You just type in Freya Casey belting workshop. And they're, all four of them are more than 40 minutes. 40 minutes, something like that. The originals were an hour, but I cut it down because everybody asked questions. It was a workshop I held last year or even before that, I don't know. And you will find a lot of answers there because it goes a lot more into depth. And of course, also, if you want to learn more about belting, I have a free five-day belting challenge on my website, masteryourvoice.tv. And uh, you can do that. And I'm sure it will help you. Okay, let's see. Please advise me, Vijay Shah. I don't know if I'm saying those names right, because I never know where you're from. Please advise me on increasing speeds and singing, changing notes and pitches. Oh, you're talking about fast ad libs and movements. I would like to learn Indian classical vocals. Thank you. I've, you've been my lifesaver. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> I don't know about saving your life, but if singing is your life, then I'm happy if I could save the day at least. Um, I think singing fast movements, I, of course, I don't know anything about Indian classical music, but I'm assuming it's very much, the, it's still the human voice. So the principles are the same. It doesn't even matter what genre or what culture you're singing in. The principles are the same. Uh, you sing pitches, you produce sounds with your voice. What I find, and I also have videos about that, um, about ad libs and stuff. Singing, having sung lots of classical music in my life and arias, lots of Handel and Bach, um, where there's fast melismas and all those coloraturas going on, I always put them in groups. So, um, for example, in the Messiah, there's this Rejoice Greatly aria. So there's this one passage, of course, I haven't sung today yet. It's like, Rejoice greatly. I'm too low, um, but it goes much faster. It's like, Rejoice greatly. And I did terrible just now because I'm totally not warmed up. And I'm not standing up. Can't really sing this clean without standing up. But you may have heard that I'm I'm grouping them. I'm making accents and then lightening up. Dum dum da 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 dum da 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 dum da 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 dum. So that's how it goes. And if you go, yeah, you want to always put them in groups. 
stuff like that is so you must do it that way and you have to do it slow at first and then speed it up but even when you do it slow you want to know where are my anchor points you need those anchor points to help you otherwise it'll be it's a little just slurring all over so i hope that helps How can I limit my strong subglottal pressure? Well, you, you do want you want a lot of subglottal pressure when you sing high. That subglottal pressure is the air pressure that happens before, like below your vocal cords, like before the air hits the vocal folds. Um, if you sing high. You want lots of compression going on there. What you do not want is the pressure on your glottis, which are your vocal cords. You don't want to push too much, too wide of an air stream through your vocal cords fold. So you need to always combine that compression that you do need when you sing very high with the very tight vocal cord closure. The problem comes is when your vocal folds are too loose because the muscles aren't trained, or you're just not enough tension, um, and you're pressing way too much air with lots of pressure against the vocal folds, then all of that air that is pressed through doesn't translate into just that pitch, but it translates into lots of other noise, which then can be heard as a hissing or breathy sound. And it's not a very clean to the point sound. A good indicator of a good tone that has a good placement with good technique is is it very clean and clear and then of course if you're singing pop you can go from there when once it's really clean clear has no distractions in the sound but just the pure sound of the pitch like ma not ma or ma I mean, it has all kinds of weird distractions. Once it is clear and clean, from there, it's like once you got to know how to do it right, and then you can just add variation. Then you can go, yeah, 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 yeah. And then you can get breathy, breathy if you want to do it on purpose. But that, I hope you understand what I'm talking about. Okay, um, I got to get off here really because I have appointments and I got to get off. Thank you everyone so much. I can't answer every question today, um, but I'll be on again probably sometime this week. And I don't know when because it's always very impromptu. Um, but if you have notifications turned on for my channel, you have to make sure that you can check that. You've got to turn that bell on so that you get notified when I go live. Otherwise, it won't notify you and then you see it after the fact that I was live. Um, you will see it in your feed. But but thank you everyone for hanging out. Um, and I'm sorry I can't answer all of your questions. Hi, Linda, I see you. Um, but I got to get off. I have an appointment here in a couple of minutes and um, hoping to see you back here. And if you're not in my Facebook group, you know, get into my Facebook group, Master Your Voice, and you can always continue the conversation there and have lots of fun with other singers who are also very motivated. Have a great day. Always keep on singing. Bye.